Welcome to this video lecture on pivot tables in Excel. What a pivot table can do for you. When you have large sets of data, you often need to summarize your data. Depending on the size of the spreadsheet, it becomes more difficult if it's a very large set of data. You can use a pivot table to help organize the data into meaningful summaries. So why use this over some of the other ways of summarizing data? couple of reasons. One, you can create a pivot table that will not alter your source data. And secondly, the fact that you can create this pivot table and easily modify it by pivoting the look, the data, changing how you're looking at the data, makes it very useful as an analytic tool. How do we create a pivot table? First, you need a set of data that is a contiguous set of data, meaning no blank rows and columns. It does not need to be an Excel table, but it can be. It could just be a regular set of structured data within Excel. Once you have that, you select either all of the data or a single cell on the data. Once you have a single cell selected on your data, you go to the Insert ribbon and select pivot table. It will open up a dialog box proposing a range for your pivot table and as long as you're using contiguous data it will select all of your data. You can then accept that option and decide whether you want the pivot table embedded on the data or on a separate worksheet. Since most of the data that we're trying to create pivot tables from is often a very large set of data, I recommend using the separate worksheet option. It will open up a new worksheet tab. From there, you can begin selecting your fields. And adding fields to the pivot table is simply a matter of clicking and dragging. Once you've put your first item in as either a row or a column, you will begin to see how the layout of your table looks. And you're going to put things that you want to use, fields you want to use as headers or labels in first in your rows and columns, then select a field that will provide data that can be um, perhaps counted or summarized or averaged or maxed or min into the uh, values area. If you want to slice and dice your data further for further analysis, you can use the filters area and place fields in there. Usually these are the more top level items that you want to see a broad overview of. So typically, Fields that are text or non-numeric are going to go in your rows area, or you're going to occasionally use them in your values area if you're wanting to do a count. But most often the items that will go in the values area will be numeric fields that you can actually make a calculation of some sort on. Once you see how things are starting to look, you can pull, you know, drag and drop, move things around to, to better change your layout to more obviously reflect the point you're trying to make with your data and you can set up your formatting. Now let's take a look at how to do this. Here we have a set of structured data in Excel. I know it's not an Excel table because I don't have the table tools design tab. I have minimized my ribbons to make it easier to show you more things. I have one single cell selected. I'm going to go to the insert ribbon and select pivot table. My dialog box comes up with the proposed range and putting it to a new worksheet. I'm going to accept these by clicking OK. Now I have a new worksheet named sheet 2 and I can start building my pivot table. On the right side of my screen I have my pivot table fields and I also have a couple of new tabs up here. I have the pivot table tools analyze and design buttons. From here, I can start adding items to my rows, columns, and values fields. Let's start with the basics and not use the filters option just yet. So let's take a look at widget types as our row. So we're going to drag and drop that down to rows. Let's put day of the week as our column field and then sales total as our values. This shows us based on day of the week, how many of each of our types of widgets are sold. This is a good way to analyze data if you want to see if there are sales trends depending on the day of the week. Now in the widget business you're not seeing a great deal of differences, but 
a little bit in a couple of places. So you can try to schedule, decide when do we want to have meetings and so on based on these types of statistics. In some industries, service-based organizations, for example, restaurants, where you might be analyzing and looking at food sales data, it would be great to be able to use when do I have the highest sales to help you plan staffing. So you can use this data for a lot of things. Now, you can see that right now I have just basic numbers. The easy thing to do to set up your formatting instead of trying to select it here and go to the home ribbon and select set formatting, I'm instead going to use the value field settings found under sum of sales. So here in, as you can see, pardon me, here in my values area, there's a drop down arrow and I can access value field settings. From here, I can do things like change the type of summarization. I could average, I could count, max, min, etc. I'm going to leave it at sum. If I wanted to change the title or the name of the labeling, I could do that now. So right now it's at sum of sales total. I could change that to just be total sales. And I'd also want to go here to number formatting. And now I can set up, maybe I want this to be accounting format. But I go ahead and I set that here. If I set it here and I move and drag and drop my fields around, but I'm keeping some of sales in there as my values field, all of the formatting will move with it. So maybe I don't like seeing it like this. I would rather see, for example, oh, let's pull down day of the week here. So under each type, maybe I want to look at it like this. And you can see how easy it was to drag and drop and move that down there. And I can change things around and very, very quick and easy. And if I go back to my source data, nothing has changed here. I can also change the look. I could make it match a table setting if I wanted and so on. So there's lots of things you can do. The easiest and most useful thing for many people is how easy it is to change the look of how you're summarizing your data because you want to show your data in the best light possible to help it make it clear what the point is.